And we're live for episode 77, the big interview with Jeff Burroughs. He's definitely no stranger to everyone in Windsor, Essex. I mean, he's, he's all over the place. He's super busy. Uh, drummer for the Tea Party, a band that's been around for over 30 years. He's also community relations for Layuna 625, a liaison at St. Clair. Drummer for the Saints Band as well, which raises funds annually for local food banks in the Windsor, Essex region. Uh, I mean, there's there's so many great accomplishments that I can talk about with Jeff, uh, some being a six much music video awards, Juno awards, you name it. The band's been everywhere. Jeff's probably been in every country in, in you know, North America and in Europe. Um, but what really I'm really interested in is talking more about uh, a little bit about his, his time as a, a drummer with the Tea Party and, and still is, but also learning more about some of these excellent initiatives where he's raising money for so many community projects. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. She's uh, propping me up there. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> I, your CV is so long, I could talk about you for hours. See, different, different hats, <laughs> same hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Jeff, every show I have to ask the question. It's the toughest question you'll experience all night. Where in Windsor, Essex is your favorite place to get coffee? <sighs> okay, so I, I've, I was always a coffee guy. And, and I, I admitted that to you early, but since I had COVID in December, I, I have not been able to drink coffee. And honestly, so coffee, uh, coffee in Windsor though, um, oh man. Uh, well, there used to be a place when I really drank coffee called Has Beans, which was Jay and Gino who ended up opening Motor Burger back in the day. Okay. Um, and that was my, like, that's when I was your age and, or, or maybe a year or two older than you, that's where my wife and I would go when we lived downtown, when, all, when we lived in a little basement apartment and stuff like that. But now I'm a, I'm a tea drinker, born again, tea drinker at home. You know, uh, I don't know what happened, but occasionally I'll go out and, and I'll have a coffee. It just tastes better maybe being out of the house, but long-winded answer for such a simple question sorry buddy well well i <laughs> i mean tea suits the the band name right so i mean you yeah. have to be a tea lover <clears throat> yeah i guess it does. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you start as a, a musician then we'll talk more about some some things you're doing locally but how did you start as a musician um well our our family was very musical uh generationally and um my mom got uh not only myself and my sister uh, but my brother into piano when we were quite young and we did, um, my sister lasted the longest. I think I did four years of conservatory on piano. And, um, one day I was just a nosy kid and I, I found some drums underneath my dad's, uh, you know, work table downstairs. And I said, wait a minute, what are these? <laughs> and, and I already knew that he had played, but I didn't think he had any. And he was sitting in for a couple dates while he was a police officer. Um, and, and kind of hid them from me because he didn't want the racket in the house, but there we go. And then everybody ended up being very musical. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, in grade school, I believe it was uh, yourself and Jeff Martin that were close friends and, <laughs> and started out the band, if I'm not correct. You, you met uh, Stuart in high school. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, we had so many different incarnations of, of bands, but essentially when he was in grade six, I was in grade seven. Um, we were in a split class in French at Sacre Coeur in Air Sacred Heart in LaSalle, um, in the old in Old LaSalle. And um, we had a teacher who who just thought, you know, she was a lovely lady, Mrs. Sewell, God rest her soul. Uh, she was from New Brunswick, French lady, and she used to call us my band, my band, my band. And she'd set us <laughs> up in the uh, in the gymnasium in front of six hundred screaming kids, and we were just like. I want to do this. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Addicted a little bit early. It was, it was great times. Yeah. And I mean, did you, did you ever think it would get as big as it did? <clears throat> no, I mean, we, we were, so from there in and out of bands all throughout high school, of course, and, and you meet different friends and different people from different schools. So um, Jeff and I would have a band together with this guy and that guy, and then we'd meet another guy and then we'd be in a band with this guy and that girl and so on. And then by the time high school uh, was wrapping up, uh, I was in a Detroit band and Jeff and Stuart were in a band called Vavoom, or sorry, that was my Detroit band. They were in a band called the Stickmen and they, um, they moved to Toronto and I was like, good on those guys. Like, I, I just didn't think anything would happen kind of thing. And I was in school and, you know, good mm -hmm. for me, good for my wife. Um, 
you know, we had intention of getting married anyway. So I was going to be a teacher. She's, she's still a nurse. <clears throat> and, um, and then in between there, before they had taken off to Toronto, Jeff and I had a little blues ensemble where I would play the bass pedals with my left foot. So I'd keep the bass lines with my left foot and I'd play drums and he'd vocalize and play guitar. And we did quite well with that, uh, making good money while I was in university. So that was, that was always helpful. But um, we'd, we'd hang out at the Coach and Horses and the manager had asked if we'd be able to get back together because she was stuck for two weeks from the date that we were there. And we said, oh, because he was down from Toronto and we took it back and we said to Stuart, why don't we just make this a trio and have fun? Well, we'd had a, a big long rehearsal at Cherry Beach in Toronto and all of a sudden we were like, this has got to be a band. And they were trying to get me to move to Toronto and I'm in still in school and I'm thinking, well, I don't know how this is going to happen. But uh, anyway, uh, they came back down. We did the show. People went bananas and we just grew it from there. And all of a sudden things things were honky dory. You know? And how did, the, how did the name all start? Uh, there's, there's a couple stories. I'm not going to stick to any one of them, but I mean, yeah. Ginsburg and Kerouac and Burroughs were poets and, and they used to get together and have what they called a tea party. And it was just a collection of minds and, and the literary references and so on. And we fancied ourselves, you know, modern day poets. And, and we just liked the whole meeting of the minds and a private tea party kind of thing. So, that that's essentially the one we go with most. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean it's it's still recognized today in the community. I, I think you're going on. Are you going on tour soon? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like a tour. We've had six or seven tours canceled since COVID, but um, yeah. the way this is working, it's um, it's festival dates throughout Canada. So one week I'll fly to um, like fly out of Windsor and we'll head to the East Coast. So I'll do a um, a New Brunswick show, land in New Brunswick, do a New Brunswick show, and then we'll van it to, um, you know, Truro, Nova Scotia, and then we'll fly to another province out in the East Coast and then come home. So then I'm home for three, four days. So it's kind of nice. It's a nice way of touring. I mean, the romance of a tour bus um, has kind of left the old spirit. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty great when you're young and you're driving across the country 13 times and 14 different or four different vans and you're blowing them up and you're skidding off the highways. And, and then when you get in a bus, it's like, Oh my God, I get to sleep overnight. This is crazy. But now it's just like, Oh, that damn bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I, <laughs> and I posted an older uh, interview from you be right before we went live. And you mentioned something about uh, going to bed at 4 a.m. and having an hour of sleep before. Yeah, it was it was never good. I remember doing a show in Boston and my wife was pregnant and she was with us because I think we did five dates on the East Coast with, of all people, Keanu, Ru Keanu Reeves' band. It was called Dog Star. Wow. And we finished up in Boston and we had to drive back and Jeff and Stuart were tired, passed out, and my wife was pregnant. And she didn't want to see me driving on my own. And we drove overnight from Boston to, to Montreal. And I just remember skidding off the road. Oh. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty it's it's a blessing once you get a bus. It really is. It allows you yeah. to do a lot more work too. You know, um, you can write while on the road. You're traveling through the mountains and you're all inspired instead of white knuckling through the the hills, right? So. It, it's, Did any of your your songs, <clears throat> perhaps, were they written on the bus, on the bus ride? Oh, oh gosh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, since 90, um, since 95, we've had a bus, or 90, yeah, 95, 96. And, oh, yeah, probably three, four albums worth of material. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because wow. it starts Over on the bus. Time. It starts on the bus, and then you take it to sound check because you're you've got to do your sound check. So we're like, what do you think of this riff? What do you what do you think about this and so on? And and you just kind of build it, and then the next day you're, you know, you're in Saskatoon, and then you're in Winnipeg, and you're like, okay, now we just try to make this better. Or like, let's take it there. So there's a zillion ways to write songs, and and that's certainly not, um, you know, we're not alone in that aspect. Everybody does that. So, mm -hmm. and uh, just speaking of of the songs you've released and and being a band for over 30 years uh that's a that's a long time for a band a lot of band, bands break up and, and and things like that happen you just think of the older bands that are they're still going around today um and producing music how did you as a band 
and this might be interesting to some some marketing people that are, are listening. How did you stay relevant, gain new listeners? How did that work? So it, we, we did have a break of six, seven years in there. And that sort of break or breakup, if you'd like to call it, 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 it came about because of our complete lack of transparency in communication. And above all, now that we've been back together longer than we were broken apart for, for that, that bit, um, you need to be 100% transparent. You need to be able to talk to each other, say, look, man, you're, you're screwing up this or, or you're doing wonderful at this or, or so on. Like any negative, everybody now realizes that it's not a personal slight. This, this, yeah. the band, as much as band members hate to see it, this is a business and you're in business with your two best friends and businesses with best friends don't always go good. And if you don't have that, you know, modicum amount of conversation going, you're going to fail in the end because, you know, someone else is whispering in this person's ear and someone else is whispering in that person's ear. And it just turns into a, a muddied swamp and you don't want that. You want to be, it has to be, you know, the team of you three. And then there is another team of us three and our manager alone. And then another team of us three, our manager and our agent alone. And then a bigger circle expands from there, but you have to really learn how to, you know, be communicative and, and stay, uh, you know, talk about things such as being relevant. And, you know, we're, we're at the age now where TikTok obviously is not for us, for young bands, obviously. Great. Do it by all means. Our, our ways and means of, of entertaining is primarily on stage. It's where we make money. It's, it's selling merch and playing and having a really good live show. And if you can't have a really good live show, you're never going to make it anyway. I mean, some, some of the pop stuff that's digestible or, or quickly digested, um, you know, don't really have to be able to perform. But if you're in a rock band, blues band, jazz band, any real performance band without backtracks and such, you really need to be able to do know what you're doing. And we pride ourselves on that as a trio. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And there's some some comments coming in. Well said, Jeff. Proud of you guys for still being together after this many years. It's from uh, Nick Baluli. Yeah, I know Nick very well. He's a great <laughs> um, guitar player. <laughs> so, um, and just moving on to some of your, I mean, many community initiatives. I think I see you three, four times a month posting about some event that you're raising money for yeah. and uh, you're drumming at the same time. How, why do you, why do you choose to give back? This is an important part of your life. Why do you do it? Um, well, like I, I always, uh, and lately, especially since COVID has come about, but, but pre preceding that, even I, 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 Literally, I, I sat myself down as if I'm speaking to myself in a corner. And, you know, you just if you have an opportunity to do something positive, then and you have the time to do it, then why not do it? Um, I have a modicum amount of of popularity because of the band and that spreads around the world. So if I'm hosting um, if I'm hosting a uh, raffle or or something like that, I can raffle it, but I can make it available to Germany or to Australia or to anywhere else in Europe or wherever. And it, mm. and it, and it just helps. So I figure, I mean, why not use that little bit of a persona that I have uh, acquired, you know, almost by accident, really through the band uh, to do better things. And I have the time sometimes to do it when I don't, I still do it, but uh, it's great. And when you think about the drum marathon and stuff at that, that was just my attempt to do something completely different. Um, bingos obviously are popular. Pasta dinners are obviously popular. Those types of things, runs, walks, et cetera. They're great. They're needed. And I just, um, I just wanted to do something completely my own, something I don't think anyone had ever really done before. I mean, people have played drums longer than 24 hours before easily. Um, but just having different bands and to be able to showcase the bands or the duos or the trios and, and switch up who receives the money now and then it was, it's just, I don't know. It seemed like the right thing to do and, and I enjoy it and it keeps me out and keeps me, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of nice because when I was touring heavily, you don't really get to see a lot of bands locally. You, you run into friends that are touring of course and so on, but I was completely out of the loop when I started this and, and I was reaching out to friends. They're like, Oh, that band was four years ago. How about this band? You know what I mean? So 
it's a ways and means to get other bands and trios and so on out there. But for me to, to do the charity stuff that I like to do, I just like to do it. It's, it's great. And I've got, you know, again, a set of friends that really, really support me all the time in order to get the funds to the right places. Absolutely. And, and it's really inspiring to others, you know, young people or any age that are really trying to figure out what they can do different in the community to give back. And like you said, bingos, pastas, fundraisers, things like that can sometimes be too much. They happen, they happen often. So with you yeah. being creative and doing a, you know, what was it? A half, half marathon? Half oh, marathon? when, when, yeah, the half marathon, when, when COVID came and I didn't know yeah. what I was supposed to do. So I'm like, well, let's just do it visually. But again, I can't do that without the help of people like Light Unit because that's a, hef a hefty bill. It's not cheap to to professionally record it, professionally film it and so on. I mean, you you know all of that stuff. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just grateful and uh, that I'm able to, to help out a bit. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just enjoy helping. Yeah. I mean, you get to meet so many people and honestly, it's, it's invigorating. And when you get to raise money, I mean, your time is worth so much more than money. If there's any piece of advice to give anyone, you don't have to be a multimillionaire, a multi-billionaire. They do have their place in society to help charities and it's wonderful. And congratulations to them for doing so well and for, for donating as much as they do. But for anyone younger out there, um, like when I started this, it, didn't really have the funds to do it. I mean, you know, $20 here, $50 here, but the time that you put into it, it's for the marathon, especially it's two, three months worth of work and it's, I'm pulling my hair out. And, um, by the time, the, by the well, time, it doesn't the look like it's come out. <laughs> by the time the marathon comes, it's like a big sigh of relief. And I'm like, Oh, thank goodness. I'm, yeah. at, I'm at the final stage. So, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, this, this comment speaks for itself from Adrian Jones, uh, the, this is the best use of fame to help others. Never change JB. Yeah, that's a very lovely lady. She's a great photographer as well. Um, I just I just messaged back and forth with her. We got a friend who's ill, but um, yeah, she's super nice. Yeah, thank you. And and Joe, uh, Jeff, you have a lot. I was called you Joe. Uh, Jeff, you have a lot of <laughs> uh, you have a lot on your plate. How do you manage it all? You're you're working so many different <laughs> avenues and and uh, initiatives happening all the time. Your cell phone? <laughs> cell phone, baby. I don't know what I'd, I don't know how I did anything without a without a scheduling feature. It's my wife asks me all the time, how do you remember? And I'm literally, as soon as you message me, I'm like, oh, Ruth Rainer, make sure I answer him by tomorrow. You know, anything and everything. Um, yeah. you know, just things that come up and some of them are, are are silly and whatnot, but I'm like, oh yeah, nope, don't need that anymore. But thank goodness, because it it is a lot to juggle. Um and days are everything from this work to that work to um, tonight we were the tea party are shooting a video the, the guys aren't in town. So it's just me. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, we're shooting a video where the band is not in, in the video, but that's happening in Windsor tonight with a very good friend of ours. And uh, so it's great. I get to do this. Then I get to hop off of there. And then tomorrow morning I got days work and one of your many guests, uh, Monty McNaughton's in town tomorrow. So we're hosting him at La Una. Oh, wow. Then, then tomorrow night I'm, uh, I'm here. No, tomorrow night I'm with the girls at, uh, Twigs on the County tour and we're raising wow. funds for, um, Canadian mental health association. So it's always, yes, and, and, and speaking of that, you're mm. an ambassador for Canadian mental health. Can you tell me about that? Uh, you know what? They asked. And at that point, I was not on any executive board. I was not on any, um, you know, anything outside of what I do on my own. And um, I again, I thought if there's no time commitment and, and if I can do something, pardon me, to help, um, then absolutely I'll do it. So, it, I mean, that stuff's pretty easy. I just... I, I host a few things and, you know, just try to get the good word out for, for mental health and, and the services that the CMHA offer, um, both locally, provincially, internationally, or uh, nationally, et cetera. Um, and it's great. So yeah, uh, Kim and Carrie and Anita, they're, they're, and Phil, they're an awesome team over at CMHA. And um, they're one of my, uh, they're also one of my drum marathon charity uh, hosts. <laughs> yes. Yes. How, how much would you say you've raised over, you know, the past number of years? I, I'm seeing like uh, 300,000 for a transition to betterness. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the the, mar the marathon is closing in after this year. I'll be over, uh, and then when I say I, I mean we. That's it's a it's a project that includes a lot of people, but we'll be over five hundred thousand for smokes. the marathon. So, but I mean, I don't count it like that. Like whenever I'm working with a charity, and when I work with a charity, I say I'm sorry. If, if I'm going to try to do this, you need to work with me and you, yeah, need, yeah. you need to play nice with the other charities that are involved. And they're and they're all great. But you got to remember, charity is a business, too. Right. So, of course, they want to raise as much funds as they can for theirs. But I'm, I'm just I'm Switzerland and I'm like, no, nope, got to play nice. You guys are all helping me out. And this is the way it goes. <laughs> and everybody's super cool. So. <laughs> um, no, that, that's awesome. And I, I just think from following on social media and seeing all the amazing things you're doing. You have to be one of the nicest people I know and, and somebody that really just from the bottom of their heart gives back yeah. and because they love doing it. And it, it's, it's very inspiring yeah. um, to just see that. I think it, it brings light into people's lives. It gets people out and, and doing things. And, and like Adrian said, you're using your fame to help others. And that's the best thing that anyone can do. Yeah. And again, it's not about money. It's, it's top of mind awareness. Like whenever you get an opportunity to give and you want to give locally, we're trying to get those smaller charities out there. I mean, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, amazing. Uh, the Cancer Society, amazing. But if you so choose to do something more locally, there are so many smaller charities out there that need your help. So why do exactly. you <laughs> <laughs> Biggest promoter of white TGs are on this call right now. <laughs> uh, no, this this has been awesome, Jeff. I know you have a, a video shoot. Um, if you could leave us with one last thing, what are you looking forward to in 2022 now that things are opening up? Uh, well, most right now, selfishly, I have to say uh, spending time with my two best friends on a stage, kicking butt for some great crowds across this country and and all the dates are coming they're not all announced yet so we can't advertise them yet but that's that's the most i'm looking for and the marathon because it's been two years that we haven't been live and I'm a little nervous about that but it'll be it'll be good lots of lots of exciting things ahead jeff thanks for taking the time to be with me tonight i enjoy talking to you about all the things you're doing in, in yqg and you're a huge promoter thanks for making the time tonight thanks lennon and congratulations great show i appreciate it Thank you. We'll see you on stage soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.